you know, like, like like a creep, like a little peeping Tom. And then he starts running away and he's scattered and he like kind of turns at me like he's putting up his dukes, like he's going to defend himself, you know, flight or flight. And like he kind of stumbles and then he gets back up and ironically enough, boom, Goldberg spear the guy, bam. <laughs> What's going on, everybody? Dr. Chris Featherstone here for yet another episode of The Wrestling Outlaws. I'm here with two of the baddest men in town, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here with former WCW World Heavyweight Champion Vince Russo, former WWE star, superstar, NXT superstar, TNA World Heavyweight Champion, soon to be... Uh, I believe undisputed TNA Hall of Famer. Yeah, uh, I, I think good. they better. You know, I think they better announce him, man. And he is uh, EC3. Uh, Vince Russo, if you were to make a quick Hall of Fame speech about EC3, what what are some of the bullet points that you would talk about? If you wow. were the wow, uh, years uh, ahead of his time. That's true. Um, unique. Yeah. Uh, uh, what is it? Dances to the beat of his own drummer. Mm. Uh, bah, bah, no rhythm. Yes. Not afraid to speak the truth regardless of the consequences. What are the consequences? Being honest? That's yes. how I was raised. No limitations. The Very world cool. is his. Bro. Yeah. Nice, man. Yeah. yeah, I'm gonna be too tough. famous for this podcast soon. So you're gonna be what? Too famous for this podcast soon. Oh man, we're dead because I'm going to Mexico. We'll see what happens. Well, at least don't uh, forget about the little people like Ben. Never forget about <clears throat> Yeah. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's jump into Browing Down Memory Lane. Let's start. Let's shoot from the hip, ladies and gentlemen. One of the other. Let's yeah, go. one of the oh, other. Damn. So, uh, oof, so this is a pretty, this is good news, but this is an unfortunate topic. Uh, so a couple of years ago, Sonya Deville was with uh, Mandy Rose. If I can re- remember the story correctly, hanging out with Mandy Rose at her house. And there was this stalker named Philip Thomas, the second who stalked, uh, Sonya Deville's home and they, uh, found him, I believe, um, so yeah, he entered the house, tried to kidnap her, uh, and she was while well, she was with Mandy Rose. And so, so basically, the accuser has been sentenced to 15 years in prison after the case was reopened. He pled guilty on several charges of attempted kidnapping, aggravated stalking, and armed burglary. Uh, the case was closed originally in 21 2021 when uh, Thomas was uh, declared. Uh, mentally unfit to stand trial. Uh, he was sent to a mental health facility in June of that year, but was found guilty when the case was reopened. So, um, so yeah, I, I did a lot of mental trauma with, uh, with, with Mandy, with, with, well, Mandy Rose for sure, but definitely um, Sonya Deville. She actually was gone for wrestling for a while just to recover mentally. And it was, it was really big on her. So, Vince, your thoughts on uh, on Thomas with this sentencing and the case reopening after he so, was... So, so what are we saying, Chris? They sent him for testing and he didn't have men- mental issues and that's why they put him away for 15 years. No, no, no. So uh, this is actually uh, this is actually my neck of the woods, my PhD's... You know, PhD's yeah, explain PhD's this to me because I don't understand. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So so what happens is when someone commits a crime that's... Uh, that's um, deemed unfit to stand trial so that's that's a lot of case that's a lot of uh, uh defense the defense will use that a lot um they'll usually either use uh, uh incompetent to stand trial mentally unfit to stand trial it depends on certain states wh- whatever states the verbiage depends or clinically insane uh which which uh, insanity pleas are very low uh because um basically an insanity plea is basically saying that you had no clue of what right or wrong was at the time of the offense, and that's mm-hmm. that's a very that's very uncommon. Uh, a lot a lot of defense attorneys don't even consider insanity or for but a little bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, but incompetency 
is um, it, it is oftentimes used as a uh, from the defense from the, def uh, the defense uh, t attorney. And so basically what happens is you get tested from someone like myself, a forensic psychologist, and you go through a bunch of uh, you go through an evaluation. You, you either ask questions and or go through an assessment and the forensic psychologist deems this person uh, competent or incompetent to stand trial. So um, if, if someone is competent to stand trial, they go through the trial process. If they're incompetent to stand trial, they usually go to a mental health institution instead of prison. So that's yes. basically what happened initially. Like Arkham Asylum, right? There you go. Joker gets yeah, I just, yeah, I, I, you know, bro, that's just hard for me because, you know, I mean, I, I, I something's got to be wrong with you to do that. Like, mm -hmm. you know, a, a normal person will just not do that. You know, that, that's why it's, it's so difficult to understand, bro, because you, your, your mind, you, you've got to have some type of a warp mindset mm -hmm. to, to do something like that. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, I actually, don't know. it was actually a little bit surprising that, the case was reopened that because he was he was mentally he was incompetent or mentally unfit to stand trial so typically this the the i guess what happens with that is you served is you spend time in a mental health uh facility that's not that's not very common that they would reopen cases sometimes they do go back so some, sometimes within certain cases they'll reassess the person yeah uh, after a certain well, that's time. Unique. yeah if, if, if they're if they're still mentally unfit they still keep them in the mental health institution or they take them out of the mental health institution after a few years then they reassess them and then you know they they can do some sentencing there but it just depends a lot of times on the severity of the crime if it's if it's quite severe and if that person has a rap sheet you know there's different factors within uh, different cases, a case by case basis. Yeah. But, yeah. yeah. EC three, what do you think? Oh, when you said rap sheet, man, I was just thinking about that time you dropped bars on me. That was so cool. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> hey, <funny. laughs> hey, I mean, this is just another case of when they put too much fluoride in the water. Look what's happening. Society's mm -hmm. crumbling, the world's burning, people are nuts, and justice was served. So good. See ya. See yeah. ya, Philip Taylor. What was it? Philip Taylor the Thomas. second? Yeah. Thomas, Thomas the yeah. second. Get a junior. We need a junior. You just don't get number two. Number two means poop. You're poop, Philip Thomas. Yeah. And, you know, enjoy 15 in the clink, buddy. In the clink. Oh, yeah. You know what? I'm at my, my parents' house. Funny story. I don't know. Maybe not. But I'll tell it anyways. Coming back from a night out, like we're, you know, 21, 22. Brilliant. I have the, the girlfriend with me. Parents are up, they're working the late hours at the bar, they get back, we're just hanging out, we're chatting, like it wasn't anything crazy. And out the window, I see these bug eyes just staring in the window. And like before anyone knew what happened, I was out the door. I'm out the door and I'm chasing. And it was a, you know, like, like, like a creep, like a little peeping Tom. And then he starts running away and he's scattered and he like kind of turns at me like he's putting up his dukes, like he's gonna defend himself, you know, flight or flight. And like he kind of stumbles and then he gets back up and Ironically enough, boom, Goldberg spear the guy, bam. Mm. And I throw him around and because all I know are wrestling moves. So I throw him in a, you know, Taz mission. And I'm just, he's like, wrong house, man. You know, screaming in his ear, wrong effing house, wrong effing house. Just pummeling this, not pummeling him like mercilessly, but like subduing him. Mm. Cops come, yada, yada, yada. They call me up two hours later. They're like, hey, yeah, we found some artifacts on him. Just want to know if these were yours. Uh, an ABBA CD? Mm, ABBA. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could say yes, but no. He's like, all right, that's all we found on him. And just, just a drunk, just a drunk guy that got lost. But yeah. wrong house, buddy. And apparently the wrong house for uh, Philip Thomas II, too. Yes. Yes, indeed. Thank you. Yes, indeed.